So, curious one day, I was browsing online the Arizona State Records for the so-called raw bench press, meaning no drugs and no tactical tricks to increase strength beyond your own raw body. And I discovered, to my shock, that I could claim the record in more than one weight class in my state for my age group, 70 to 74 years old. It's not that I'm so amazingly strong. It's that... In the way a friend phrased it, at my age, I'm one of the last men standing. It becomes more of an endurance test than a strongman game. And as part of this longevity, I've never done any kind of performance enhancement stuff. I still don't do any kind of drugs, not even medicinal stuff like aspirin. Maybe that's why I'm still kicking. Knock on wood, I don't need that junk yet. My greatest crime is coffee, and I only recently started doing that for an energy perk, once in a while, on weightlifting days. Most guys my age are too far out of shape to get off the couch. Don't give a damn about throwing weights around and playing macho anymore. Or their bodies are actually too old age broken. Or of course they're dead. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I do the bench press wrong. There may be all sorts of little rules and quirks about how to do the bench press in an official competition. Maybe your hair needs to be combed. Maybe you're only allowed three grunts and one groan as you struggle with the weight. Maybe your official weightlifting uniform needs to be blue with a white trim. Maybe if you let loose a wild fart during a tough lift, you're disqualified. But I think I'm doing them okay. What I can bench press isn't astonishing. With a pause at my chest, right now it's 290 pounds on a good day. At a body weight of 211 to 213-ish. But still, for all men who weightlift of any age, I'm apparently, judging by stuff I find online, at least in the top third or so of them in my current weight class. Including the vast majority of guys of any age who don't bother to weightlift at all. I rank way up there with the community of guys who do exercise. But for my age, it seems that my bench press is unusual. Even elite? This website says that for every thousand men my age and body weight, it estimates that only five are stronger than me with this particular exercise. I like those numbers, but I have no illusions about all this. And as I see it, and as I'll explain, What's at stake here, especially at my age, is not just vanity. I looked further into this bench press record stuff and was stunned with what I found. In my age and weight category, based on official sanctioned weightlifting meets, and depending on how good I felt the day I lifted, and whether or not I'm doing the bench press strictly enough, and also what the difference is between fully tested and just tested, I guess referring to testing for cheater drugs, I would rank somewhere in the top 18 to 50 raw bench press guys in the whole world. Am I not understanding something? This seems preposterous. To rank in the top 1,000, even 5,000, shocks me. My lifting routines are pretty modest. Some weeks I only work out once or twice and I skip some days, even a week here and there, when I feel beat. And I'm not on anybody's weightlifting team, obsessively driven and pushing each other to greater heights. Nothing fancy, I just putter along. I'm not obsessed with exercising, just reasonably dedicated for my age. In part, I think this potential world ranking reflects the fact that for most men on the planet, very, very few regularly bench press or even exercise. And going to a gym or creating one at home is quite a luxury. Not many have that opportunity, and most probably wouldn't care to do that anyway after the back-breaking effort that is probably their regular lives. The current Arizona state record for my weight and age categories, at least for now, is 233.6 pounds. I'm not disparaging that. It's a very good lift for a guy my age. But I can get more than 233 handily. Here I'm getting seven repetitions of about that weight, 235 pounds. And recently, I've been able to get 260 pounds, more than 20 pounds above my state's record, for three reps, strictly, with a requisite pause in my chest. At least on a good day I can do this. Not always. On bad days, I might have trouble lifting a toothbrush. 
On such a good day lately, I've hit 290 for one rep. At my current weight, 212, and in my old geezer age group, I might be able to claim the next higher body weight class in Arizona too. Guys weighing up to 242 pounds with the state bench record is 281. And the next weight class up after that for guys who weigh as much as 275 pounds, where the record drops to 259. Even the next class, up to a body weight of 308 pounds, I could easily beat the state record there of 253.5. Again, I think what's at stake with all this is there's just not many guys my age still doing bench presses. Bad shoulders, rusty elbows, disease, pestilence, flooding, death. In truth, the thing that bugs me about all this is that I don't feel much like I merit it. I don't know that I earned any record. I never had a goal to get in this neighborhood. It's more like minding my own business. One day I backed into what I thought would be a crowded room, and all I find is my own face in the mirror. There's even a kind of sadness to it. Old age takes a toll and is a big, big barrier. A couple years ago, I decided to work to try to bench press 300 pounds again before I died. The best I'd ever done in my life over 25 years ago was 340. I was now deep in the territory of senior citizen. So a few months back, I reached that 300 goal at age 71 with a fairly strict style and a pause in my chest. And then a few days later I hit 310, less strict, here I'm doing 305, touching my chest and going back up. But I weighed myself a couple days after 310. To my shock and horror, I weighed more than I've ever weighed in my whole life. And there wasn't much of a decision here. Did I want to be fat and maybe get stronger? Or did I want to lose weight, although I would probably lose strength too, and get healthier? It's a no-brainer. So far I've lost about 20 pounds and unfortunately a roughly equivalent amount of strength during a diet down from the 300 bench press zone. But like I say, it looks like I could still easily claim the state record for my current weight, even beating some of those other heavier old guy body weight classes if I wanted. And meanwhile, I still want to lose about another 15 pounds. When I first discovered that I could likely claim a state record, I thought maybe I'd go do it. But the more I considered, the more unattractive that effort seemed to be. First, there would have to be an economic investment in this. I'd have to join an official weightlifting organization for a fee. I'd have to pay to compete in a weightlifting event. I'd have to buy a stupid mandatory little muscle man outfit called a singlet. One of the supposed reasons you have to wear such a thing is to prevent cheating. And I'd have to drive some hours with mean gas prices to some big city to compete in the meet. I never did any of this before. And I'd probably have to risk catching the COVID stuff at a crowded public lifting event. I also had elbow surgery a few years ago. And I can't quite straighten perfectly one of my arms. Would I get penalized for that? Even if I can unrack and rack the weight alone without a spotter? And if I successfully claim the record, the only tangible reward would be a little piece of paper that certified my record accomplishment as an old geezer, one of the last men standing. A very temporary record, no doubt, until the next guy comes along who sees my number and says, Man, I can beat that. So what the hell? The most important thing about claiming any record is simply knowing that you can do it. And any such milestone I garnered probably wouldn't last long. Younger, upcoming generations of weightlifters morphing into their 70s have had a lot more angles, perspectives, tricks, and likely fanaticism on getting stronger. True, many of them have already broken their bodies down to rubble with mind-boggling strength accomplishments, overtaxing their muscles, joints, and bones. A lot of them have sacrificed their older years with damaging drugs in their youth, and most probably won't be around to claim anything but a wheelchair if they make it to my age. But some will probably slip through, still extremely strong, although declining, a residual from years, maybe decades, of very, very serious weightlifting. Here's a look at my home gym. I don't have much money. My pickup truck is in the neighborhood of 20 years old, and when it dies, I might be down to a thrift shop bicycle. But this gym became a priority for me. 
It's a cramped exercise space still being created, but also a meditation center and a stress killer. It keeps me relatively sane. And it's so convenient. When the pandemic began, all the public exercise sites closed down. And even when they opened back up, they are still a flu risk for old geezers. I didn't lift for nine months in this period, and I lost a lot of ground, so I eventually decided to create a home gym, mostly scooping up exercise stuff at reasonable, sometimes steal, prices on Craigslist, government auctions, thrift shops, garage sales, and the like. How many people do you know, kind of kooky enough, who began to build a home gym when they're in their 70s? The hero on my gym wall isn't a bodybuilder icon like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Ronnie Coleman. My guy is a lean fossil, ancient author Henry David Thoreau, who died during the Civil War. He hiked a lot, but probably didn't see the rationale in pushing up and down a box of horseshoes to improve his muscle mass. After all, he was a philosopher and social thinker, so let's be real here. Pushing a heavy weight off your chest doesn't have much applicability in the real world. Oh, here's my little mascot, Milo, nicknamed Zeus, or Thor, also known in this household territory as the Lion of Arizona, who can, quite literally, run circles around me, even if it's a light burden I lug around. Oh, here's a poster of Woodstock someone gave me. Yes, I'm old enough to have went to that rock event, and I actually did. You see, too, my motivational text on the wall isn't something like, pain is gain. My guidance is by naturalist John Muir. The mountains are calling, and I must go. I still hike a lot in the wilderness. I love it. And that could very well be my metaphorical epitaph when I die. Time to take a last whiff of the glorious pine trees and head on up. Yes, I hike quite often, but at my age, energy is a big deal. I don't wake up anymore launched from a springboard like I was in my youth, where the world was my puny little oyster. Hell, some days it's a noble conquest to merely get up out of bed and slide safely into my slippers. There must be guys stronger than me on the bench press, in my age frame and weight class, in my state, now. Probably not many, but insofar as they are publicly invisible, they probably think about all this the way I do. It's enough to know that you can do something without having to get a kind of bureaucratic stamp about it. After all, if competition is really the game, at core, we're all competing against ourselves, aren't we? Just trying to get better, to improve, such cliches. But, hmm, maybe it's not really about competition with ourselves or other guys at all. Surely, especially as we age, our fundamental motivation is in keeping our big toe, no both feet, in the physical game against time and the inevitable gravity of old age to stretch our resources as long and as powerfully as possible. We're all competing against something a hell of a lot stronger than some guy with more determination and bigger muscles. I might drop dead tomorrow, or the floor might cave in somehow and my weightlifting days are over, but this could happen to you too, whatever your age. It's merely a game of likelihoods and percentages, so hand me another dumbbell, no? At some level, all of this is really symbolic. I'm just not ready to fold up my tent. Not quite yet. We all might as well, as they say, play to our strength. Ultimately, the best you will be includes the satisfaction you get in knowing that you're doing something as well as you can, with nothing fake or artificial, not cheating, no sleight of hand. However you cut it, your genuine, honest best is your own world record, known to only you and God. And that, I think, Young or old is as close as you ever get to conquering the world, a monster power that is always going to be way, way stronger than you.